As an EFT practitioner, your insights, empathy, and skill play pivotal roles in facilitating change, whether you're working on your own issues and goals or you are helping others. What is one of the most important foundations that helps you ensure you continue discovering and trusting insights, building empathy for your clients and for yourself, and growing your EFT and human connection skills? What is that foundation? It is your sense of self-worth. In this episode of EFT Tapping Junction, you and I will explore what I believe is the most effective pathways to building self-worth using the powerful tools of self-reflection. Stephen Carter here, and I am your host for EFT Tapping Junction. Over more than four decades, I've helped thousands of people release stress and achieve success in every area of life using an array of methods to include, of course, EFT or emotional freedom techniques, thought field therapy, trauma tapping technique, neuro-linguistic programming or NLP, hypnosis, meditation, and an array of other holistic methods. You can learn more about my work by visiting the website for this and other podcasts focused on emotional and spiritual well-being. You'll find that website at stressreliefradio.com, stressreliefradio.com. Who is this show for? This show is for you if you are an EFT, which, as we know, is short for Emotional Freedom Techniques, If you're an EFT practitioner or you use other tapping methods such as thought field therapy, trauma tapping technique, positive EFT, or other meridian tapping methods for your own self-care, this show is also for you if you're a therapist or a coach helping others. During this episode, you and I will explore the importance and pathways to creating ever-growing self-worth. Why does growing self-worth matter? In part, because as your sense of self-worth grows, so too will your sense of trust in your insights, your empathy, and your skills. And that is true whether you're working on your own issues or you're helping others. As your sense of self-worth grows, so too will the quality and consistency of positive results. In my experience, the most effective pathways for building self-worth is through the practice of self-reflection. So what is the foundation for self-reflection? Self-reflection transcends the mere analysis of techniques and client sessions. It involves a deep introspective look into your beliefs, your biases, your fears, and your strengths. As a practitioner, frequent self-reflection helps ensure any personal issues don't cloud client relationships or influence your client work inappropriately. Secondly, it encourages better understanding and empathy towards your clients. Finally, self-reflection helps you identify areas of personal and professional growth. Engaging in regular self-reflection allows you to develop a keen awareness of your internal states This helps you stay centered, it helps you stay focused, it helps you stay present with your clients, and it enhances the positive energy flow that creates an environment where clients feel seen, heard, and understood. 
all of this leads to an elevated sense, an appropriate elevated sense of personal worth. As a practitioner, cultivating a sense of personal worth is not an exercise in ego enhancement. No, it is a necessary step toward becoming a better practitioner. A solid sense of self-worth, of personal worth, ensures you can stand confidently behind your skills and knowledge while also being open to learning and growth. It empowers you to set healthy boundaries with your clients and with yourself. You automatically model the positive behavior your client is seeking. How do we begin building enhanced self-worth, a sense of personal worth? We begin by acknowledging the journey along this pathway is never-ending. Do remember, ongoing feedback is the breakfast of champions. If you're working with clients, I encourage you to spend two or three minutes after each session answering the questions, first, what went well? Secondly, what seemed missing? And finally, what did I learn? What went well? What seemed missing? And what did I learn? If you are doing self-care work, you also can answer these three questions after each of your personal EFT sessions. What went well? What seemed missing? And what did I learn? Do not dwell on one aspect of the session Answer each question succinctly and move on to your next client or your next activity. Depending on how many sessions you've had, at the end of the week, schedule, say, 30 minutes or more and review each case that you work with that week. Read your answers to the three questions. Do you notice any patterns emerge? What did you do consistently well? What, if anything, seemed missing from the sessions? What insights arise as you assess the week's sessions? Briefly write down any insights and file that single sheet of paper away in a folder named something like Weekly Insights. At the end of the month, revisit the folder and scan through the previous few weeks of insights. What patterns, if any, do you notice? Do your notes suggest any skills or practices you would like to build on? If so, list those skills and or practices and add them to your calendar or other resource as action reminders. In addition to your monthly case session reviews, I strongly encourage you to create what I call a growth journal. I encourage you to journal answers to key questions at least once every two to three months. You can, of course, do this more frequently. As you journal, track and act on insights that arise from your journaling. Over time, you're going to find your confidence and your sense of self-worth are growing. Allow yourself whatever time feels right to be present with each of your selected questions. There is no rush here. It's a process of allowing your subconscious mind to serve up answers that you will then write down in your journal. Here are 12 questions to get you going. Feel free, in fact, I encourage you strongly to change, modify, delete, and or add questions that come to mind. As you engage in the journaling process, it's likely new questions or new areas of focus will emerge. 
Make whatever changes you choose to make in your list of questions. I will have these 12 starter questions listed in the show notes section of this episode. Again, make whatever changes you believe will help you focus on what matters most to you. Again, these are starter questions for you to consider. Question one, how often do I apply EFT and or other methods for my own issues? Question two, what issues have I let go of and what issues remain unresolved? How will I proceed with any unresolved issues? Three, as I evaluate my EFT personal and professional sessions, what insights arise about my skills and confidence when working on my personal issues and if I see clients with client issues? Question four, what strategies have I found most effective in building and sustaining rapport and trust with my clients? Question five, what strategies do I use to maintain presence and attentiveness during sessions, and how effective are those strategies? Six, what feedback have I received from clients that has significantly influenced my practice, and how have I implemented that feedback? Seven, in what areas of my practice do I feel most confident? And in what areas do I feel I need further growth or education? If further growth or education is needed, what is my way forward? Eight. How has my approach to EFT evolved over time? And what have been the key influences on this evolution? Question nine. How do I manage the balance between empathizing with clients and maintaining necessary professional boundaries? Question 10. What are my coping strategies for dealing with the emotional impact of my work? And how effective are those strategies? Are adjustments needed? And if so, what are those adjustments? Question 11. In reflecting on successful outcomes, what common factors contributed to these successes? And question 12. How do I stay updated with the latest research and developments in EFT? And how do I apply this knowledge in my sessions? In relation to this final question, we have a Facebook group that is dedicated to tracking research, not only in EFT, but in all holistic methods, and also mainstream research as that research relates to holistic practices. This is a Facebook group with more than 700 members from around the world. Members include people who are just beginning their holistic healing or practitioner journeys, as well as world-class practitioners for EFT, thought field therapy, and just an array of other methods. The name of that Facebook group is Energy Healing Network. If you would like to join the group, you are more than welcome to do that. I will have the link for the Facebook group, Energy Healing Network. I will have that link in the show notes. You and I have covered a lot of information and recommendations in this session. In summary, these key recommendations are, one, know the importance of of acknowledging and continuously growing your sense of self-worth, 
as a person and as a practitioner. Secondly, after each session, take two or three minutes and answer three questions. Answer them briefly. Those are what went well, what seemed missing, and what did I learn? Just jot down the answers. Next, at the end of the week, go over all of the summaries from that week's sessions and identify any patterns that emerge. Briefly write down any insights or action items on a single sheet of paper and file that weekly paper in a folder called something like Weekly Insights. Next, at the end of the month, Revisit the folder and scan through the previous few weeks of insights. Make note of whatever patterns, if any, that you notice. Do your notes suggest any skills or practices you would like to build on? If so, list those skills and or practices and add them to your calendar or other resources as action reminders. Next, in addition to your monthly case session reviews, I strongly encourage you to create what I call a growth journal. I encourage you to journal answers to key questions at least once every two to three months. As you journal, track and act on insights that arise from your journaling. Over time, you're going to find your confidence and your sense of self-worth continue to grow and get stronger. And finally, allow yourself to feel the positive energy of self-worth. Do use EFT sessions, if not daily, at least several times a week to continuously build your confidence and sense of personal worth. Your setup statement can be something like, I choose to recognize my growing skills and my growing ability as I work with clients and work with my own issues. I choose to celebrate my growth and I give thanks for that growth. By following the recommendations you and I have shared in this episode, you will have strong, solid evidence that you're growing as a person and as a practitioner. Do check the show notes for the summary of recommendations and the 12 starting journaling questions we discussed. Change those questions as you choose to match what is important for you. This is Future Steve with a short interjected announcement. If you would like the 12 questions and a summary of my recommendations, if you would like those in a doc format where you can simply copy and paste those questions or do with those questions what you uh, would like to do with them, I will be happy to send you a copy of the recommendations and 12 questions in a doc format. Simply email me at cartermethod at gmail.com and in the subject line, put the words creating self-worth as an EFT practitioner Again, simply insert the words creating self-worth as an EFT practitioner. Put those words in the subject line. You can leave the body of the email blank, and I will send that information to you in a way that you can simply cut and paste into a journal if you choose to do an online journal. Let's return now to our conversation. If you have questions about anything you and I have shared or you would like to be in touch for any reason, email me at cartermethod at gmail.com. If you're not yet following the EFT Tapping Junction show, well, this is a perfect time to do that. When you follow, and of course, it is free to follow, you will never miss an episode. 
You can, of course, follow the show where you get your podcasts. And, of course, you can listen to previous episodes of EFT Tapping Junction by visiting our website at stressreliefradio.com, stressreliefradio.com. Until our next visit together, this is your host for the EFT Tapping Junction show, Stephen Carter, wishing for you and your loved ones blessings in abundance.